Hey everybody, I have a quick question for you. Have you ever tried plugging in a bunch of audio equipment for recording or for live streaming or something like that, and when you plug it all together, you get a crazy buzzing sound that sounds a little bit like this. I'm going to try to make a video today that explains this problem and how to solve it in a way that would have helped me out immensely if I had found this video a week ago. I'm Alex Markley, and welcome to my personal hell. Okay, so I'm going to try to explain this problem um, to the best of my ability in the simplest form that I first encountered it, which was, you know, I'm trying to set this up, almost nothing is plugged in, and as soon as I start plugging things in, things go wrong almost immediately. So we'll start with the mixer, which effectively has nothing plugged into it right now. Uh, it's got the power plugged in, and it has uh, one speaker plugged in, which uh, this will go to um, this powered monitor here. And uh, the, basically there's two XLR cables joined together. Uh, you'll see why later. And, and that's it. It's just the mixer and a speaker plugged in. Now, as soon as I plug in one of these other devices, so in this case, I'm plugging in my PC, you'll notice things go haywire right away. Now, <clears throat> a couple of things to notice, you, you know, and this might be intuitive, which it will be misleading, but you'll see we actually have signals coming in on this cable, right? But this cable is actually plugged in to a computer that is off. And if I unplug these cables, you'll notice the sound will actually change. So some higher frequencies go away, right? And as I unplug things, it affects the sound that you hear until I get to the very bottom where the PC chassis is actually grounded. And if I unplug that, the signal is clean. And now you'll notice there's no signal coming in, right? But again, this PC is off. So where's the signal coming from? Is it coming from this PC? My, my answer is no, and I'll prove it to you. If I plug everything back in, here's my audio cable. The signal is coming in right here, but if I unplug the speakers, now you can't hear the buzzing anymore, but also the buzzing is gone. Well, most of you have probably already figured out what was going on. Uh, for folks like myself, who maybe are a little bit slower on the uptake, here's, uh, here's my quick explanation on what's going on. Now, I'm not an expert uh, in either uh, electrical engineering or signal processing or any of that stuff. So if, uh, if this explanation is wrong, please feel free to let me know in the comments. This is just how I was thinking about the problem once I did some research and tried to understand what was going on well enough that I could actually solve the issue. And again, we will solve the issue today. But first, let's talk about ground loops. So this is our grounding bar. And one thing I want to call out really quickly is that a lot of times uh, when I was talking to people about this issue, they would recommend maybe moving the studio uh, over to a different part of the house, uh, something you know maybe farther away from a refrigerator or farther away from a a compressor or freezer or something like that. But actually, I don't think that's related to the issue unless maybe you're using a guitar pickup or something like that. For this kind of issue, where uh, where the issue is directly related to the ground on the AC, it doesn't matter where you are in your house because all of the grounds are all gonna come back to the same place. They're all tied back to the same grounding bar on your circuit breaker box. Now, what we've got here, in this situation, 
I've got powered speakers that are connected to the AC and therefore they have their own ground. I have my mixer here, which is tied to the AC and it has its own ground. And I've got multiple computers, uh, PCs and a laptop that are all connected here as well and they have their own ground. So far, so good. But as soon as we start plugging things in, for example, we've got the output to the speakers here and we've got the input from the PC here. Now, bam, we have a uh, grounding loop. Immediately, we have more than one path to ground. And the reason is because these audio cables don't just transmit the signal, they also introduce new routes to ground through the cable shielding. Now, that cable shielding is there on purpose. It's actually supposed to help improve the audio signal, but in this case, it's actually making things way worse. So, how do we fix this? Um, the idea is we want to be able to lift the ground off of this signal so that we can connect this guy to this guy without, uh, without communicating this whole grounding loop. So I'll introduce to you the first box that I'm using to solve this problem. So this is a Radial Pro D2 stereo direct box. Now I'm not going to make any money off of any of the links, but I'm going to put some links in the description below for uh, the different tools that I show you today. The, the bottom line is this is a very, very standard tool that uh, musicians and um, live audio folks have been working with for a long, long time. Uh, it's, it's a very standard tool and um, the only thing special about this one is that he is, uh, he is stereo. So you actually have a left and a right and um, you have on the other hand, so on, on this side you've got uh, you've got inputs that are unbalanced and then on this side you have inputs that are balanced and generally the reason why you would do this is to send a signal from a stage all the way back uh, to um, a mixer or a back of house uh, control booth that would have uh, you know balanced inputs on the mixer and just regular unbalanced line outs on at the stage and you need to transmit that signal a long distance without introducing any interference from power cables and things like that that would normally uh, trash your audio signal. But this guy has another very important function which is right here. I don't know if you can see that or not. Uh, yeah, yeah. Where it says ground lift. This switch will actually lift the ground between this side of the box and this side of the box. So now if we're looking at our ground lift as, or our ground loop as the central issue that we're trying to solve, then this box can provide a clean way to send a signal from this side to this side, but totally interrupting the ground, preventing the ground loop from having a path through the box. So what does this look like? We've got our inputs. We don't need this headphone extension cable. We can just plug this guy directly in here. And then this guy goes right in here into our inputs, left and right. And then we make sure that our ground lift is enabled and we plug in two XLR cables one for the left and one for the right and they go all the way into our mixer like so. Presumably. Okay, now I can prove to you that they are connected but when I plug them in, we go down to a reasonable noise floor. It's like minus infinity. For, for all practical intents and purposes, we got minus infinity. And if we crank it up, you can hear it sounds like white noise, which is exactly what you want 
out of your noise floor. And that's after I crank it like way, way all the way up. Okay. So now uh, I've got my ground still plugged in and I can plug everything back in. Maybe, maybe I can. Okay, so now the computer's plugged in, the mixer's plugged in, the speaker's plugged in. Problem solved, right? Not so fast. This is where things might be going into the twilight zone a little bit because I'm going to start plugging things in and we're gonna to start to hear some noises that just don't make any sense. Now, um, right here is my ATEM uh, uh, Mini Pro. It's the live streaming box that I've been using and I really like it a lot. Um, but it only has, uh, for audio inputs for analog, it only has um, unbalanced line level inputs. So I've got a couple of uh, cables here that just will go from, from the mixer to the Mini Pro. And I've got the Mini Pro plugged into my laptop, which is, you know, how one does. And then I'm gonna plug my mixer into the uh, USB hub. And now listen to this. You might not be able to hear this. Hopefully you can. Hear that? That is a nasty sound. And uh, I'm having trouble amplifying it. I actually have the speaker turned up all the way, but in the headphones, it sounds really bad. So what's going on here? Well, if I unplug the USB, it changes, it gets a little better. But it doesn't go away until I plug unplug this USB. Now, the thing is, I need both of those USBs to be plugged in in order for this to work. So what's going on and how do we fix it? Okay, so I think at this point we're ready to fill out a little bit more of our diagram here and I'm gonna show you the second product that I found to help me out with this. Now again, um, as we go through this, I wanna reiterate, I'm not making money from any of these. There's no sponsorships, there's no affiliate links. Um, this is just a tool that I found to solve my specific problem. But really what I wanna to communicate to you is the principle behind how I solved the problem so that you can apply your own you know, reasoning and, and choose products that make sense for you. Well, we'll get to this guy in a second, but um, now I've drawn out the, the design a little bit more clearly so you can see how all of the different pieces interconnect and what kinds of um, problems we're running into. We introduced a direct box or a direct interface from here to here, which lifted the ground on this audio signal. But you'll notice that we still have lots of different ground loop uh, opportunities in here. There's a shield on this data cable, there's a shield on this audio cable, and there's a shield on this audio cable. And so we have not just two paths to ground, which is all you really need for a ground loop, but we have many paths to ground, and all of them have the opportunity to create some really nasty noise. So here's how I think about solving a problem. Basically, what I want to do is I want to figure out a way to create what I am calling a ground bubble around the mixer, which the mixer is kind of the nexus of the entire uh, setup. It's where all of the analog audio uh, begins and ends, and it's where all of our individual devices that all have their individual grounds, they all meet here in a way that's particularly vulnerable to inducing analog noise. So what, what I learned was that with the direct box, we have the ability to uh, we have the ability to lift the ground and send the signal into or out of the bubble without popping the bubble. But this line here, this line here, and this line here, they all three pop the bubble by going through it and introducing uh, a second path to ground that's not this guy. This guy is our one true path to ground and we should not have any additional ones aside from that. 
And what makes this problem so particularly hard to think about and reason about is because you don't actually get a buzzing until you pop the bubble the second time. So you pop, you pop the bubble with one of these lines, like this line to the speakers, and, uh, and then you're fine until you introduce another ground. So it's actually the second thing you plug in that causes the problem. We saw that right at the very beginning when uh, we plugged in the speakers and everything was fine, and we plugged in the PC and everything went crazy, but we could unplug either one to make the problem go away. So what I found was for the route to the speaker, so from here to here, this guy actually solved my problem. And what you can see is this, this guy, it's the Sescom IL-19 Extreme Hum Killer. Now, what we're getting actually is not a ground hum. That's not the right way to think about it because because we've got digital buses and we have digital noise being induced onto the ground. So because we have a ground loop, it's actually causing a really high frequency hum. But it's the same ground loop problem. It just sounds different. So anyway, with this guy, I, all I did was plug in the speaker um, with a, another cable. So the speaker cable goes in one side and out one out the other side to go directly to the speaker. And what that gives us is, actually I'm gonna do it right here. That gives us a way to route the yeah, IL-19, gives us a way to route the audio signal from the mixer into the speakers without popping the ground bubble. Now we still have these two lines. And you might ask, well why not just try to route the bubble around the ATEM and include the ATEM because the ATEM obviously has some analog audio components to it. And uh, the reason I don't like trying to do that, one, I actually tried and it did not work. Um, but two, I think the reason why it didn't work is because of all these HDMI cables. The ATEM has cables going in every direction and, uh, and they're completely impossible, as far as I could tell, to do a ground lift and fully isolate. Uh, so instead, um, I wanted to try to figure out a way to, uh, to basically just extend the ground bubble around the mixer and I thought that that would be probably good enough. Now, probably there, there's another twist to this story. I'm foreshadowing. Um, okay, so at this point, the only two lines that we haven't figured out are this audio line from the ATEM to the mixer and this USB line from the mixer to the USB hub, which then gets controlled as an audio interface from uh, whichever computer I'm using. Now, uh, this one was tricky, and I had to find a specialized product for it. You can't find it in a music store. I couldn't find it at Micro Center, um, so I'm gonna take a, I'm gonna grab this thing and show you what it looks like. You need to be really careful with this thing, because this is the product that I am using to ground lift my USB. However, I have to be really careful recommending these guys for two main reasons. One, this, this iFi company, they sell a lot of really goofy snake oil stuff. And they've got some marketing claims on their website that do not make any sense and are clearly hokum. Um, the second reason is the first one of these that I bought, I plugged it in and it immediately melted and caught fire, instantly. So there's definitely some uh, made in China stuff going on with, with, uh, with these guys and the quality control is obviously not the best. I, I will say I lucked out, I bought two. Uh, the first one I plugged in burned up, it didn't actually uh, ruin any of my ports. Thank God for that because I would have been very upset. Um, but this guy works great. And let me tell you what this guy is doing. As far as I can tell, you have your USB in 
uh, and your so you you have the USB device side and you have the USB host side and then you have this five volt side that goes in here. Now a direct box is generally passive and the reason a direct box that's passive can work is because it's just a signal going into a transformer and it doesn't need any power. Um, USB, on the other hand, absolutely does need power in order to function. Both sides need to be powered active devices. With most mixers and audio interfaces, that's not going to be a problem because they're powered by some kind of separate uh, USB um, or separate uh, power brick like an AC wall adapter or something like that. But for some, if you totally electrically isolate this side from this side, they're, it's not gonna work. It's actually gonna stop working. And so what they've done is they provided this input right here to provide clean five volt power with, crucially, a DC adapter with, uh, with lifted ground um, so that you can connect this side to this side without um, polluting the ground and popping your ground bubble. So this is exactly what I did right here. I have the iFi eye defender right here. And what that does, again, is it allows my mixer to connect to the rest of the USB bus, which is just super noisy and has more than one route to ground and it connects down here. Now, quick caveat, right? I mentioned that a lot of the marketing material on the iFi website is total hokum, uh, bogus, and there's a lot of misinformation that floats out there around digital audio and what kind of cable you need and what kind of signal quality you need for digital audio. And one of the things that I wanna stress here is that this is not improving the signal quality between the mixer and the USB. Digital audio going into USB, it's either going to work perfectly or it's not going to work at all. In some marginal cases, you might get dropped frames and things like that, but the most likely thing that you're going to see if the signal quality is really bad, like if you have a bad cable or if you have a really long cable that doesn't work properly, you're going to get disconnects. The device is going to fail to connect. It's not going to sound marginally bad. It's only going to either work or not work. And the reason why we need this is not to improve the quality of the sound on this link. The reason why we need this is to improve the purity of the ground in here so that we don't have all the noise on the ground uh, shielding over here leaking into our mixer. That's what this is doing. This is not improving the USB audio quality at all, right? I just wanted to make sure I called that out because if, if we're not thinking about this correctly, there could be some misunderstandings. Now, I wanna call out another quick misconception that I've run into, which is that all you really need are cheater plugs where you could lift the ground here, here, and here and basically, I know you've seen them before, you can find them at Walmart and you just plug it in and you only get the hot and neutral and the ground pin is cut off and it's missing. That is extremely dangerous. That is a good way to burn stuff out and it's a good way to set yourself on fire. If you look it up, you will see that people have died doing that and I strongly recommend that you never ever do that. Number one, because it's dangerous. But number two, because it misunderstands the problem and it's a it's a shortcut solution to a problem that once you reason through it, it's actually pretty easy to solve. So now if we're following along, we should have almost everything worked out. And uh, you know, we only have this one connection in through the ATEM, so maybe we're fine at this point, right? We have one more gremlin to track down in the system and boy, is it gonna be a doozy. I actually ran into this problem in January when I did my first live stream using a setup very similar to this. We'll just do that real quick here. And I didn't realize until afterward and I listened to the playback that there was a nasty buzzing going on and I couldn't figure out why. 
it actually took me uh, until just now, <laughs> this this weekend, to uh, finally track all of the sources of buzzing down and and get them uh, get them taken care of. So what's going on here? I uh, I've got a really clean setup. I have my my mixer set up. Uh, I have direct boxes on all of my analog inputs. I have uh, fuzz busters, IL-19s on uh, all of my uh, all of my speakers. I can actually start plugging these guys back in now since I've made my point. I've got my uh, I've got my IL or IFI uh, USB audio ground lifter thing plugged in here. It doesn't need power because I've got the mixer already has its own DC power. So everything's plugged in and everything sounds great until I plug in the ATEM. Hear that? Now that sound is actually coming in. So you see mic one right there. That sound is coming in through the ATEM's mic one input right there. But it's not coming out of the mixer because from the mixer's perspective, there is no signal whatsoever. And if we turn up the noise floor here, again, we have a really clean white noise coming out of the mains. So where is the ATEM getting this high-pitched buzzing? Well, I bet you can guess what my answer is going to be. Okay, back over here at my increasingly hideous drawing, I want to call out that this single connection, which is the only signal going into or out of our ground bubble that is not ground lifted, that is the problem. So I, uh, I think if I'm going with this analogy of the ground bubble uh, extending around the mixer, basically, even though most of the time you can get away with punching one hole in the ground bubble um, without causing too much havoc, uh, you know, in this case, it's only the one and it definitely is causing problems. And I think the reason why is because of the ATEM itself having so many individual routes to ground from uh, from you know the different devices that it's plugged into. So, uh, but I'm not 100% sure why this connection is particularly vulnerable to this. But uh, my theory, my working theory was that if I could just create a ground lifted signal here with some kind of box, that I would be able to solve the problem. The trick is. With the mixer, I've got balanced out and the ATEM has unbalanced in. Where we would use a direct box would be if you have unbalanced in, right? There's our line inputs that are unbalanced and then you would take the output from the balanced side. So on this oh, over here, and there's actually two of these, one for the laptop and one for the PC, you've got line uh, from the PC to the direct box and then XLR from the direct box to the mixer. But what about in the reverse? And I, I'll tell you what, I actually struggled with this problem for about two days because I was looking at all the different ways that I could convert the audio. Like what if I, you know, what if I, uh, you know, made a c cable that had a special wiring to it? Or what if I, what if I found a, uh, an optical, like a Toslink, uh, SPDIF, uh, you know, or an HDMI injector because the ATEM has a bunch of HDMI ports. Maybe we could do something like that and, and make the, uh, embed the audio digitally into HDMI and on and on and on. And I was really struggling. I actually, uh, ended up, I was looking at boxes that were like at, not in stock anywhere. I was calling all over the place like a crazy person. I mean, like these people, like I would go talk to the people at the music store and they would just nod 
like, oh man, this guy's crazy. So, um, but anyway, they, they were not wrong. Uh, I found out something really interesting about this kind of box. And I, I again, I have to be really careful with the, uh, with the plugs here because I'm not plugging any of these companies, nor am I plugging any of their products. I'm just sharing with you my experience in the hope that it will be beneficial to you. I, I cannot speak for every direct box, but this Pro D2 Stereo Direct Box, which crucially is passive. It has no power to it. It is a very simple uh, transformer design. You can, instead of putting the input on the input side and taking the output from the output side, you can actually drive a signal into the output and take the output from the input and it will take a balanced signal out from the mixer and unbalance it into uh, coming out the input side. So effectively what we're doing is we're running this guy in reverse. Now, um, you gotta be careful with the levels because this isn't a one-to-one -one transformer, so there's there could be some level shifting issues that you might run into, but the, the ground lift still works. And so we can actually just put, this was such a revelation to me, we can actually just put another direct box right here. And now we have a full isolated ground bubble with our mixer and every single analog input and output all uh, totally isolated from the ground loop scenario. And I am happy to report that it works. It works really well. Um, I will put links in the description below. Again, no affiliate links or any of that nonsense. Um, just trying to help out where I can. And, uh, and I will um, give you a quick, very quick tour of what I have set up and what I'm expecting to be able to do with it. Okay, so now I have everything set up exactly the way I want. There are zero functional compromises. Everything works exactly the way it is intended to. I have my, uh, I have a microphone here that runs into the mixer so I can, you know, speak when I'm doing uh, video conferences or live streams. I have two line ins, uh, one from this PC and one from this uh, USB hub that allows me to uh, route uh, background audio from whichever uh, device or devices that I want to use. I have the USB audio here that actually allows me to um, use this as an audio interface if I want to record audio, but it also allows me to send audio to the mixer for a slightly cleaner signal. Um, the line outs are, they're really good, but they're not, you know, obviously perfect. Uh, then I have my, um, I have my speakers that I can use. Testing, testing, one, two, three. I actually think this microphone is pretty cool. Um, so I've got, you know, balanced uh, outputs to the speakers, so I've got a really clean signal there. I've got balanced out to uh, a direct box that goes to the ATEM. And as you can see, I've got my signal going into the ATEM, uh, which is super clean. And if I mute it, you'll notice the noise floor goes to zero. This is super, super key. No, uh, no more buzzing, no more nasty hums or anything like that. And, you know, basically with the ATEM, I can switch from one video input to the other. Uh, I can control the audio from the mixer. And even if, for example, if I'm on a video conferencing call or Discord or something like that, I can have talkback in through one of the lines and going out to my headphones, but not getting routed back out to the ATEM, which of course would create a nasty feedback loop. So, um, you know, because with this mixer, I actually have uh, multiple layers of outputs that are all different um, 
different mixes. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, this was really painful for me and I'm uh, honestly just hoping that some part of this video will help you to not suffer from the same mistakes that I made and to uh, get the dream setup that you want and that you need for working from home or live streaming or whatever it is you do uh, without suffering from gremlins that honestly sometimes feel a little bit demonic because you affect one, you know, you do one thing and it affects on totally the opposite side of the system. You get suddenly buzzing coming in that everything was fine a minute ago. Um, but I think with that ground bubble, uh, way of thinking about it, that mental model that I'm using, uh, so far it has not steered me wrong and hopefully it will not steer you wrong either. If, uh, if this helped you, leave a comment, let me know. Uh, if you think I'm totally wrong and just full of it, let me know. Uh, you know, I'm interested to hear alternative perspectives. So thanks again, uh, like and subscribe, and uh, we'll see you, uh, see you later. Thanks, bye.